my main thought is that Gogmoth is like obviously uh, a good modern deck. Like it's already good. And so you're probably gonna have like a pretty decent win rate against the the the, the top decks just by nature of like being another strong modern deck. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking it'll, too. It'll be interesting to see if Pod puts it over the top though. See if it seems scary in the shell. Yeah, it seems like a pretty big buff to what's like already already like a very strong deck in the format. There is thank you for the three months. Appreciate you. Yeah, so I, I see. I don't see a lot of questions about the Obelisk Spider here. I think the Spider's good because it's... So the win rate here matters less than whether Pod actually does anything. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You definitely want to, like, take note of the games where Pod is actually in play more than just, like, the regular Yogmoth games. I gotta preface that because I'm sure you're gonna 5 me again. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> like, letting my chat know. Just setting expectations here. Yeah, of course. What do you think of Obelisk Spider and regular Yogg? So I like Obelisk Spider if you're playing Neoform, which the earliest versions uh, of these decks did play Neoform, uh, because it is a specifically a three drop that you can like, if you have only a two drop in play, you'd want to be able to get a three where Eldritch Evolution gets you any mana value. Um, but like with the specific mana value matters cards, I think that the uh, the spider really shines. And spider is also really good with the Hapatra Yogmoth plan, uh, additionally. Okay, this hand is really soft to Fury, and uh, Sprawl did name Red. So I'm a little scared of Fury here. Yeah, like if I just go Hapatra, <laughs> if I go Hapatra plus Hierarch, I'm just dying. Uh, so I guess I guess I'm gonna go Wall of Roots plus Strangle Root Geist, and this makes me uh, more resilient to a Fury here. Was the final rate when we were Kiki Pod? Uh, two and three, two and three. I think the same as uh, the Caleb. Go, I, th I think Caleb went three and two with Just Guy Twin actually. Yeah, but yeah, this this yeah the spider is good in like the mana value matters tutor targets. So like Neoform or Birthing Pod, it's not very good uh, outside of that context. I feel. I do feel like Elementals has a pretty good Yogmoth matchup. Just like the pitch Elementals are so good. Let's start off an attack for three with good old Stranglerud Geist. And then I'm going to Yogmoth. Going to start off by killing the Reef by sacking the Geist. No Solitude is huge. Um, let's go ahead and try to draw a Young Wolf. All right, let's maybe not let's maybe not overcommit too much here. Just wanted like one more look at the young wolf. But we're set up to kill next turn. Uh, can even kill with good old obelisk spider too. If Caleb goes to ephemerate the mold drifter, I'll I'll kill the mold drifter. Hard cast fury. All right, so I want to sack the Geist at least one time. Probably just, probably that's, that's the only sack, okay. So we can go Hapatra into Cord for four, one, two, Cord for three, which is a little short here. All right, I guess I'm just going to go Strangle Geist, attack for four. Sorry, for five, and be happy to trade this for Fury. Cool. Happy to trade that for Fury. And then play Obelisk Spider plus Strangle Geist. And then next turn, we can go Hapatra into Cord for Yawkmoth and combo off. Uh, I guess it's not a complete combo. I don't have the second undying creature, but uh, Hapatra plus Jogmoth is a it's a huge chain. We get to drain every time we do it with the Obelisk Spider too, which you don't get to do with Blood Artist. Or you, I guess you do get to do a Blood Artist because you sack the token. All right, Prismatic Ending. Ephemerate's the Ball Drifter. Kind of feel like that should have happened. I guess they drew, drew the Ephemerate off the Triome. 
Okay, so I can cord for... Oh, I can still cord for four after playing the Potra here. Okay, cool. Oh, I should have played the Dryad over though. All right, so we get a snake, we get a drain. So we're not gonna actually win this turn. But I'm just gonna kill the mole drifter here. And then we just have this, we just have this like recursive life neutral machine gun with Yogmoth plus Apatra. Do you win by repeatedly putting counters on the snake? Uh, so you can't put the counters on the snake because you you have to sack the snake as part of the cost to put the counters on it. Uh, but I can go here. Uh, I can go. Yeah, as soon as there's just like a creature to put counters on, the game kind of ends. Let me go ahead and just uh, I'll, I'll always yield to these. Yeah, yeah, like you need you need toughness to kill. <laughs> uh, but I can also put counters on the obelisk spider here. And I could put one counter on the Hapatra. Yeah, it wasn't quite it wasn't quite lethal until my opponent put uh, some points of power in play here. Uh, but now I get to kill the Omnath, and I can continue to actually kill my opponent because they're at four life. I can go put a minus one counter on the Hapatra. Remember that you cannot put any uh, you cannot put any um, Yogmoth can't put a minus one counter on itself, and Hapatra can't. Um, Hapatra's attack trigger can't put a counter on Yogmoth either. Thought you could make two snakes. Um, oh yeah, I, hold on. Yeah, three snakes is infinite. I played so much of this deck with Spider without realizing that three snakes is infinite. Jeez. Okay, that's good to know. I think I think we might have been able to do that actually. Isn't it easier with Vasir of Remedies? How does uh, how does Vasir combo? Vasir doesn't the Vasir doesn't drain. This, like the the draining on Obelisk Spider is the important part, right? Um, okay, we're, we're playing against Elementals. Let me sideboard real quick. I want the Plague Engineer, of course. Um, I guess that's probably it. <laughs> um, I I might cut the fourth messenger. I don't think I want veil. Yeah, y'all y'all can't y'all can't put counters on himself. It's put a counter on one. Wait, you can put counters on Yogmoth? I didn't realize that either. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good to know. Been a while. Been a while since I had the snake combo. I'm gonna say the red green rock deck. Be good for a big tournament. Uh I assume you mean red black. I think yeah, I think yeah, it'd be fine. Oh right, right, right. Yogmoth has pro humans. That's right. That's I you can't actually. I was I was right and then got uh gaslit. <laughs> yeah, pro humans means you can't put the counter on itself. Which is kind of a fancy way of saying you can't, or another creature. Honestly, it should say, a, a, yeah, it, it should say put a counter on a, another creature just to make it not as confusing, right? Can you make a non-human copy of Yogmoth though? Ooh, we have Birthing Pot in this hand. Let's keep this. Three snakes, it's an infinite. Oh, right, right. you sack a snake, you kill a snake, you get one snake. You're right, you get, you're minus one snake every time. Getting a little debated today, I guess. It's been a while since I played Yogmoth. We're finally finally getting some Yogmoth content that everybody keeps asking for. <laughs> but it's uh with Birthing Pod. And we get to cast a pod. Definitely just gonna cast a pod here. Let's get a swamp for messenger, I guess. I haven't put a pod on the stack in a long time. I didn't even get to play with the deck that much back in the day. Maybe a little bit. If my Hyrek dies, it's a big problem. 
We'll make do. Oh, yeah, croaking counterpart on Yogg. Okay. Be pretty funny. I think Pod makes red matchups even harder. Um, I don't know, like, red mat like, burn is, is somewhat popular, I guess, but, like, you can compensate for that with, like, sideboard cards, maybe. They can play a lot of Kitchen Finks. I don't know, maybe. And maybe not. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna go activate pod, get a strangle root geist, and then grist minus the strangle root geist. I guess I maybe should have. It, it doesn't really matter. You can just respond to grist minus. Yeah, if Caleb has solitude, I get blown out here. Because you can, you can respond to the minus. It just doesn't matter when I do this. Yeah. Do get blown out. But now we have extra life for our birthing pod. Pod the Grist away for Yogmoth. Uh, you can't pod Grist. Grist is a Planeswalker in play. That's the only way it's not a, a, a creature. I do think I'm just going to go Geist, grab a messenger, let let Caleb on top of two. Oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I totally forgot I have this card in my deck. <laughs> I totally forgot I have this card. <laughs> Whoops. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, Omnath is pretty interesting. Uh, Fluster Storm, if you have it, uh, wouldn't. Wow, what a turn. But we drew the very powerful Obelisk Spider. Uh, okay, so I guess we have to go Geist for Grist. Kill the Omnath probably. Our flick lands be good for next test case. I don't know. I don't think they should be unbanned. I don't think we'll think about it. Are we dead here? It's been a crazy game. I don't think I can get out of this. Yeah. I mean, I can like chump block, chump block, but it's not super interesting. We go for it's a fairy to stop pod bounce. It's a little narrow, I think. Especially on the play, I'm like less worried about pod getting bounced. Is Young Wolf good? Yeah, Young Wolf is really good in the deck. It's a combo piece in this deck, and it's also good with pod. Uh, oh, keep. Maybe you should do loot. There's no, there's no way. Like, I feel like looting is not a good one to do because like. Looting is another one of those cards that it it does a very similar thing in a lot of existing decks, but it, it also just is the best at what it does and enables like a dozen different strategies and is just too it's just too good at what it does. I, I don't think it, I don't it's also like a like a stream of where we play unbanned looting. A lot of those games are gonna be like like the looting player can't can't lose if uh, their opponent player doesn't draw cyborg cards. And and uh, there's good, I think there's gonna be a lot of that going on, which is not that interesting. Ponder kind of the same thing. It just goes in a dozen different decks, and it's just not that interesting either. Like I like there's you can't build a deck around Ponder. It's just not. It's just hard to actually do a stream like this for that kind of card. All right, so I guess we go wall into Grist.
Is Hogak interesting? I don't. I also like Hog like Hogak, Treasure Cruise, Dig Through Time. Like these are cards that like you can build around a little bit more, but also like they're very they're very much broken cards. You know what I mean? Like these these are like some of Ma like Magic's most poorly designed cards. That I don't think are are also in like that interesting because of that. You know what I mean? How busted would Careful Study be? Yeah, that could be uh that could be a more um. That could be a more interesting one to do. Like, what if Careful Study were legal and modern? And, and we could we could workshop this, right? And there there's obviously other things we can do. Um, but I don't want to, like, continue this series just to continue it. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't want to continue it just because it's content. I'd like to do it because it's actually something I'm interested in. And, like, I have been thinking a lot about it. There's really not, there's really not a, another card I'm that interested in, so... We'll see if there is something else, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to continue just this just to continue it. Yeah, the texture probe does enable fun. That's definitely the best thing it enables. All right, pitch Omnath, Ephemerate. Okay, so I guess one wall and one grist are dying here. So I suppose I need to kill the Fury before Ephemerate can rebound. <laughs> Test Stone Forge, yeah. That's another thing, like compared to like the older band series kind of stuff. A lot of these cards have been unbanned already. <laughs> like Jay's Stone Forge Mystic, Bitter Blossom. The Artifact Grants might be okay. I really don't think they would be okay in, like, the Urza Saga Thought Monitor metagame. At the very least, they would, like, be okay because they're just, like, really soft to sideboard cards. Which is a form of okay, I suppose. Should probably sack, sack the Insect Token now. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That's right, the pod variants. Yeah, we we play tested against uh, Kiki Kiki Pod uh, before this, but there there would be a lot of there would be there would be a lot of different variants. Eldra, I don't know what Eldrazi Pod would look like. Kind of interesting. So we're gonna get our Yogmoth Solituded. Okay, let this go. We really like to draw a land. Okay, it's interesting. I think I'm supposed to Yogmoth here though. See if we draw the land. Okay, I don't have a second swamp, so this is kind of painful. It's not it, the Yog, messenger plus Yawgmoth isn't a kill, though without another undying creature. But just having the messenger in play makes my Yawgmoth a lot stronger. Good evening, Gray. Uh, see that I must play Barn Card Forever Bolt. It's not just Bolt, Mean Maniac. It's like Stoneforge, Jason, Arcanist, or um. Okay, Jace is not broken in Legacy. Let's like let's clear that up. Jace is not like a or or Stoneforge Mystic. These cards are like not, right now neither of these cards are broken in Legacy or even like particularly competitive. Arcanist is banned though, but the reason like these kind of cards are banned like Arcanist is really good. It's just it's so powerful in like the Ponder way day the Ponder Brainstorm Days Wasteland deck where you get to force the game to be all about mana efficiency. You get to force the game to be just super duper low to the ground. That's that's really where um, that kind of card shines. I'm gonna spend just four mana on this, um, and and it's it's also like definitely true that modern is is much more about playing to the board than than legacy is, where like the presence of combo decks force players to be full of full of interaction, um, and so like decks decks like that end up t tend to end up being like pretty strong. Or, card, or cards like that tend to be good, you know, 
in that kind of environment. But it's it's not just lightning bolts. It's like way more complicated than that. I guess maybe I shouldn't have sacked now because I like solitude is actually kind of likely. Okay, it was endurance. Another copy of Grist. Let's draw a card. Okay, spiders could draw. I've always liked old Obelisk Spider in these decks. Or in, in this deck. <laughs> I do only have one Yogmoth left in the deck here, so if they have Fury, which they do have. Things get a little dicey. Let's go ahead and put that last counter over there. Pass. Caleb only has one card in hand, so I don't need to be, I think, too, too scared. Yeah, this turn, let's just go Plague Engineer on Elemental. Wall of Roots. Kill the Fury. Poking for one. And I can pod the Plague Engineer into Yogmoth if I want, but I again I only have I only playing three and three Yogmoths in the deck, eight tutors, so I don't want to just throw that away. And and also like losing the um Plague Engineer doesn't cost me nothing either, of course. Oh, that's, no, 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 I, I have one Yawgoth in exile and one, one Yawgoth in the graveyard. You're wrong about that. Okay, so this is probably going to go exile block. This is game three. No, yeah, I, I have one, one Yawgoth in my graveyard, one Yawgoth in exile right now. So we get an Athena here. I guess we're just gonna get another Athena. Which is my dog who who does bear a striking resemblance to to Young Wolf. And then I could play out my a, a second Grist here and then minus kill the solitude. But I feel like that's a bit of a spew. I'm just gonna jump block, I think. Your dog's name based on the city or the goddess from Greece? It's based on the name she had when I adopted her. Nothing too fancy. <laughs> Where is the thing? She's, she's still here. She's just not on the stream very often. Do you like Popper? I haven't uh, enjoyed Popper. In, in, a, in a long time. I, I haven't been playing it a ton, of course, but I like the last several times I've been playing Popper, I haven't liked it. It's just like, I you know, I sound like a boomer when I say stuff like this, but it's just like, I, I don't like how Popper is so decided by like conspiracy sets and like the Monarch cards that just feel like they were never ever intended to be like in the in the Popper format at all. Yeah, we already we already lost the dry rubber. Man, Grist is so good. If Caleb's last card is Ephemerate, I guess we play the second Grist out. And Caleb notably did not put Kahira in hand and cast Kahira, so it could be the Ephemerate. It is. Hmm. It's pretty good. I think I'm sucking the Blood Artist. And then the re the Ephemerate is going to rebound. The Ephemerate is going to rebound. So 
think I should just attack. So it chooses not to not to ephemerate to kill the grist, which is like a totally fine choice. And is that my last grist? No, I got one shuffled back in. Okay. Prismatic endings the Geist and That's a draw. I guess I'm gonna ambush the solitude. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna ambush the solitude. Unless they can hear at me, then I then the Yagmoth doesn't block. Well, I guess I could put a minus counter on it. It is pretty dangerous because this this is my last Yagmoth, but I think I'm supposed to go for it. Okay, we got it. Bummer. So that's our last Yogmoth. Unless we get Endurance, we're not getting to Yogmoth anymore this game. We might still be able to win with like Messengers. Caleb's top decks have been pretty good. Okay, here is pretty dangerous here too, giving this Vigilance. The messengers just like can't attack into it very well. Is Fury just a reason to cast Corda EOT? I don't know. It was a reason. Um, Killing the Solitude did have like a decent amount of value. I feel like our play was fine. Is there any specific reason this list is running Peatland? Peatland's really bad in Yawgmoth because your life total needs to be high to combo. <laughs> yeah, Peatland, Peatland is pretty bad in Yawgmoth. In my opinion. But it's like, like, like yeah, your life total needs to stay high. But it's just like very easy to ask about Peatland on turn 14 <laughs> when we're pretty flooded. All right, GG's, that was a wild match. Yeah, that match was super crazy. Um, it also felt like... I mean, you played some pods, and then I think you lost the the two games that you did play pod. And, but the birthing pods didn't feel bad, but it didn't feel like it like pushed you over the edge. But yeah. the, cards that were good, the cards that were good against Yawgmoth were still good against Yawgmoth. I agree. Like, they definitely seemed like an upgrade to evolution in those games, but... Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, but not, like, so just game-breaking or anything. Yeah, but, but I was saying it's like ephemerate like you like sacking your creatures in your ephemerate deck has a little bit of tension. Uh where you're in kind of inherently need your creatures to be in play to ephemerate and like sacking your wall and the cre if the creature you use sack your wall to get dies and your ephemerate top decks are kind of bad and Caleb did mention that he felt some tension there. I'm gonna keep this on the draw against hammer. I won't be broken because you pop where I stony. I mean, that's another thing. It's like cards that are good against Birthing Pod are not good against like the rest of the pod deck too. Recently, uh, pilots are cutting messenger and more and more. Why is it important with pod? Well, I mean, I I, I thought I thought this would be maybe somewhat clear, but messenger is really good to sacrifice to Birthing Pod, right? Like Birthing Pod and messenger have a lot of synergy together, so that's why I'm playing four in this list. I thought that would be somewhat clear, but maybe not. We got Springleaf Drum there. I think I'm just gonna play out my mana here. Just top deck of Yogmoth. Awesome, Bryce. Yeah, we're gonna play some Fiddlebender tomorrow. Maybe not the whole stream tomorrow, but definitely some tomorrow. Yeah, like I, I think one messenger is like. I don't know. Like, you, you don't combo with Messenger all that often. Uh, but Messenger, like, I, again, I think if Birthing Pod is legal, like, your Messengers get a lot of value. So I want it to be on the full four. But obviously there's, like, a lot of different ways to build this deck, and this is the kind of deck that you would really need to playtest a lot before you really figured it out. If it felt like you figured it out completely. 
So we're pretty cold to a old pure steel paladin. I think I just play Grist and plus here. Build over a string root geist. Second copy of Saga. Has the paladin. 14, 14, trample lifelink. 15, 15, trample lifelink. Sorry, 20, 24. Minus here, block here. I think I'll pack it up. Game one is definitely a lot harder than sideboard games in this matchup, though, where we just have access to a pile of great cards against them. And this is a matchup where I'm going to go. I might cut all the messengers, actually. Messenger is like our worst card. And then I can probably cut the spider to. I want to keep it all the tutors when I have access to these good tutor targets. I could maybe cut String Root Geist number four and Grist number three. Raisin Borrower and Out of Time and Blue Wedding Control and Yorion. I'm not a big fan of either card, to be honest. Uh, they don't synergize together either. If you think that they do, they you can't bounce your own thing with Borrower. Keep one messenger for the pod chain. Mm, that could be relevant. We have we have we have we have the we have three th we have three three drops to get. Well, I guess you can't pod grist away. I guess I can be persuaded. What a name with Plague Engineer. It kind of depends on what's in play. Like naming human uh, or artificer kills Sentinel. You can name uh, is it Construct for Ornithopt or for Midmight. And you can also name um, Phyrexian <laughs> and get uh, Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, we lost match one to Elementals. And now we're down a game against Hammer Time. We haven't tried Dark Depths. I think Dark Depths, like in a non Wasteland format, is just like clearly too good, to be honest. Well, thanks for the raid, dude. Oh, the old Twilight Mire hit draw. Okay, we can keep this. Turn two out and Liberate. Liberator is kind of exciting if we get to flip it. Guess we're not super likely to flip it. But Solitude format. I mean, there are cards, like, there are cards that answer it, but it's just like. I, I don't want a modern format where Dark Depths is legal. Dark Depths is, like, really insane. It sounds miserable to me. Just because there are cards that line up well against it doesn't mean it's, like, good for the format or even, like, close to good for it. Can maybe play Geist this turn. I think my pod list would be similar to your non-pod Yawgmoth list. I'm, I'm confused by the question. This is the pod list I built. So kill the smith. Just pass. Like Yogmoth and Modern, the bands on pod. I'm still confused, I'm sorry. Depths is literally unplayable because of Solitude and Prismatic Ending. Well, Prismatic Ending being a sorcery speed answer isn't very good against uh, Dark Depths. <laughs> I don't know if that's a sarcastic comment, but sorcery speed removal for Dark Depths is historically not good because you take 20 damage before you can answer it. All right, that was a really good draw. I need to draw land and I win. I 
I guess I need to draw land in the next 10. Oh no! Whoops. Oh man, what just happened? I, I misclicked and uh, sucked the wrong creature. Happens. Still less embarrassing than my solitude mistake. Tashi, thanks for the 17 months. Appreciate you, buddy. I've had a few of my chat members suggest, like, acting as though mistakes didn't happen and stuff, but some, some mistakes you just, like, can't even rewind on this. And I think it leads to, like, inbred testing when you do that. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it's fine. As, as, as long as, like, the viewers, you know, just take the... Take it to the account of the testing, and they can, they can form their own... Like, they can pretend, like, the mistakes didn't happen, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, that can inform their their opinion of the results and stuff. But I mean, mistakes happen in tournaments too. Like that's a yeah, for sure. If you try and pretend like both players are acting perfectly or whatever, you kind of lose some of the um, you kind you kind of start missing out on like if a, if a if a deck is complicated and, and tricky to play properly and stuff. Like that's a knock against it. That's a knock against the deck taking over and dominating the format too. Like it's also a relevant thing you're missing. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I said that in the most like garbled way possible, <laughs> but hopefully my point got across. <laughs> yeah, I, I got. I know what you mean. I definitely know what you mean. Let's see. So let's play this and then chord for. Young Wolf again. And then we're going to see if I draw the Blood Artist naturally. If I do, this game ends. It might just be best to kill the Paladin and pass. I think let's just do that. Wanted to get a few looks first. And then we can go Twilight Mire, Hierarch, Hierarch. And then when next turn? Yeah, one one short of courting for courting for um Blood Artist here to win the game. Lego, think you Twitch Prime, appreciate you. Did I diamond hammer? Oh, well, we have Force of Vigor up, We're, we can't die here. That uh, also does not uh, stop the combo here, I think. I guess we just have to find, we, we have the other undying creature in hand. Yeah, it should be fine. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Yes, yeah, so we grab the Blood Artist and then we reset our Undying Creature. And then I'm gonna go save targets, always yield. And I guess I should, I should just cast the Messenger to show Caleb that he's dead. Okay, going to game three. I feel really good about our matchup post board. It's definitely not as good game one though. Just force. Oh, it forced the the lantern. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? It also wins. Hand seems fine. Could be a little too slow. But you know we're not we're not playing against a very interactive deck. Our creatures are really likely to survive. Okay, land there is amazing for us. So that I'm able to go uh, triple one drop next turn into 
I don't I don't think I can win on turn four. Well, this is a really good draw for Caleb though. So I'm taking eleven down to eight, and then I mean I, I don't think I really have another line besides hope that hope that you know Caleb doesn't have access to Shadow Spear. And that the Athenas can jump block for a turn. I can't court for three or anything here. Caleb does have Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, GG's. Yeah, GG's. I feel like that match kind of sailed past any question of like whether Pod was too good or not. Like it's it was just like kind of irrelevant. Was there a situation where Evolution would have been better than Pod? Did you draw Pod at all over the course of the match? Uh, I didn't have Pod in that game three, um, so I, I don't. I don't think so that it would have been particularly relevant. Oh, that, you know that's actually not true. I did have Pod in that game two when I had a million cards and like in a, in a bunch of creatures in play. Where's so. just where it's just irrelevant because you win regardless. Yeah, just like a, a one that one activation's more f effective. I mean, I don't think that it's like. I don't. I don't think the question with this deck is is Pod an upgrade to to Yogmoth because I think it clearly is. But I think the big question is like is Pod too big of a buff to Yogmoth and the deck is just like unbeatable with it. And that that doesn't seem to be the case so far. It has not felt like the case. No, I feel like Hammer Time is an interesting gauntlet tester. Is like either the the deck we're testing does its thing or Hammer Time does its thing. It 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 feels a lot of like. Is, does the deck that we're testing actually have, like, sideboard hate for Hammer Time? Yeah, I, I agree with that, too. I agree with that, too. It's, in some ways, it's the police, but it's also, like, yeah, like, if, if I have, like, Force of Vigor that game, the game is pretty different, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I, some, someone else uh, pointed out, I thought this was a really good point, that Yawgmoth does need its life total to be high, uh, in a lot of its games, to you know, sack life to draw cards, to uh, to combo off with messenger. Although you don't, you, I find you don't usually win with the messenger combo that often. But birthing pods life life loss does actually have a really high cost in this deck too, which is more it's pretty real. Yeah, I more. wonder if I wonder if that could be like adjusted. Like you could play kitchen finks. I mean, you don't you don't want to play kitchen finks, but you could. Yeah. Um, or um, kitchen finks has or, synergy with Hippotra, which is. Not nothing, or that uh that two drop that comes into play with a treasure token, that every time a creature comes into play you gain a life. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that, yeah. I, I had that card in. You can also play uh, Essence Warden too. Uh, I I had I had that card in one of my earlier drafts, but I feel like you want to have um a a two mana combo piece and then a three mana combo piece when you have your Undying combo when you have the Birthing Pod in play. It, it might be the case that you want um. Essence Warden plus Blood Artist and not play the Spider. That way you can fetch Dryad Arbor and then Dryad Arbor into Essence Warden to at least gain a lot of life in those spots. But Essence yeah. Warden doesn't exactly kill. So I, yeah. I, I think those kind of questions are like the answer that you find the answers to those questions after testing for, you know, a hundred matches or so. Or right, or right, things. right. Hard to figure out in a single league worth of games for sure. Okay, let's keep. Does the Birthing Pod build work differently than regular to make four messenger better than mainboard endurance? I mean, it's a little different, yeah. Obvious, obviously, like it's it's important to note, like this is like my first draft of how I feel like like the most basic build of Pod would be. It's important to note, like that that's what I'm playing right now. First draft of most basic variants that I that I, and, and like the most like obvious way to build the deck. It is like definitely the case that um, Yogmoth Masters, if Pod was unbanned, would spend hundreds of hours playtesting different things and finding the best version of the deck. And it would be also different in different metagames. People would have different opinions, but it, it the the deck list would be different than this. And it's important to make sure that we're on the same page about that.
But it actually seems just slow for modern. You know, I actually kind of agree with that sentiment. And I, I didn't think that uh, I would uh, be in the middle of the stream with that opinion, to be honest. I've been, like, pretty, like, I, I you know, it's my, my opinions for both the twin and the pod stream have been, like, kind of opposite of... My, my, the reality has like, or the, or the results of the testing is maybe a better word to use than reality. Like it has felt, um, it's, it's been, it's been pretty different than my, uh, expectations. And I think that's like the important thing here, right? Is that pod has been banned for six and a half years <laughs> and, uh, people, I do think just, just like actually playing some games with it, seeing what it's like. In the same way, just playing some games with Twin and seeing what it's like um, is is good is super helpful to um, actually form and an, to to create a, an informed opinion and a good opinion. <laughs> Jeez, uh, Twin Twin. I went into Twin thinking it was going to be pretty medium, but ended up thinking it was too strong. All right, so I'm going to bring in the Veil of Summers and the Endurances. Don't think I want the ooze. Plague Engineer could be okay. Actually, actually, I was actually thinking, what are my reasons for wanting to include Opalus Spider in this version, besides the obvious different mana value for Pod, was that it's actually probably decent against Blue-Red. Was uh, something I was thinking. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I think trim a Court of Calling, because it's kind of bad uh, against Counter Magic. Not, uh, Burning Pod, I think, is a bit stronger. Because if it sticks, it's just so hard for them to deal with. Um, I think I'm going to be trimming on Messengers as well. Probably keep one for the Yawgmoth chain. Wall of Roots blocks Ragavan pretty well. Young Wolf blocks Ragavan pretty well. Uh, the Hapacha comp Hapacha is probably pretty pretty slow in this matchup. Probably not a card I want access to. And can maybe cut Strangler Geist number four. C could maybe cut Birthing Pod number four, but we should at least we should leave it in for testing sake. Does this mean Pod is unbannable? I mean, we're still formulating opinions. I have played two matches with Yawgmoth, right? And so it's like really hard to like, it's hard to say. And it's important to know that, um, it's it's important to know that uh, n no matter like how strong our opinions of Pod are after this like 10 matches, the reality is that 10 matches is not a big enough sample size to make any hard sweeping conclusions. Um, it's enough to get a more informed opinion than we had because again, we nobody's cast Birthing Pod in Modern in like six years, or at least I haven't cast Birthing Pod in Modern in over six years. And just trying to get a more informed opinion is, is the goal here. It's not to make a conclusion today. Yeah, I think that this is the best shell for Pod. I could be wrong. There's all the, the, that is the thing about Birthing Pod. There's a million ways to play with it, but ultimately, like if the Pod isn't too if the Pod isn't too strong in the format, uh, like if it if it actually like is a somewhat balanced card just on power level alone, then uh, then maybe it is a is a, a card that I could see being unbanned. That being said, this looks pretty pretty strong, huh? Or maybe it's Veil of Summer that's strong. <laughs> maybe it, it's the Veil of Summer that's strong, huh? But Birthing might be playable in Helia combo. A big problem there is it's like your cheap creatures don't really want to die. Maybe it would be fine if you're playing... Um... Let me get Grist here. Well, I can get Obelisk Spider too. Let me get the Grist. Maybe it would be fine if... Um... Like, you play, like, Voice of Resurgence, but you need creatures that, like, like, you don't want to sack your Aryak champion and your 2-mana two 2-2 two -two counter guy to Birthing Pod. Those are not good creatures to sacrifice to it. But you you could build it with the Heliod combo. Or you could, like, just, you could just, like, play the Heliod combo. You could, you could play, like, you could play, like, all the combos in the same deck. You could play a deck that has Yawgmoth combo, Heliod combo, Archangel Thune, 
Uh, Jacob, thank you for the, the raid, dude. Hope you're having a good day. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, and Devoted Druid, Valer uh, Vasir as well. You can just have all of it in the same deck um, and see how that feels. All right, Unholy Heat the Grist. So here I think Caleb is dead. Now this this is like a very scary, scary game for Yogmoth. Yeah, Pod looked nuts there. Or was it Veil of Summer? <laughs> yeah, was it Veil of Summer there that looked nuts, or was it Birthing Pod? I mean, kind of both, right? Like the the. Uh... Birthing Pod was definitely better than um, Evolution was. Yeah, that's definitely true. Definitely true. Yeah, both are good. <laughs> Enigmatic Incarnation might become a deck again with Pod. Maybe, yeah. That that is the thing. It's like Birthing Pod would be really a really exciting unban if it is a good unban because it, it does open the door to a, a ton of different decks, and if it is acceptable. At its power level, uh, if like man, if if modern is just so efficient that birthing pod is in the ends up being like a very mana intensive thing that is disruptible and people are like main decking needle already because they have saga and there's like a lot of solitudes and endurances and lightning bolts and uh, it's just it, it might just not be that scary. Uh, and, and if that's the case, if that's the case, I'm not saying that it is, but. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting because it just like is a brewer's dream birthing pod. Yeah, Caleb was playing Kiki Pod before, but but there there's more than just Kiki and Yogboth. Those are those were these are just like kind of the two probably most obvious ones to try and uh what do that spider does? So Obelisk Spider is a three mana one four reach. Whenever uh, it's, it's a, whenever it kills Tom and Adams to a creature, you put a minus one counter on that creature. Uh, so like this body actually lines up pretty well against Dragon Rage's Channeler and Ragavan, but it also says whenever uh, you put one or more minus one counters on a creature, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So if, if you feel like your Ragavan matchup's not that good as Yogmoth, you could compl consider playing the Spider. But I'm playing it because it's a three CMC combo piece. So if you have uh, two Strangaroo Geists and you, or like a Geist Messenger, and your life total is low, and you need to pod for a combo piece, and you can't get Blood Artist because Blood Artist costs two, uh, th then you can get uh, um, Spider instead. Is why I'm playing it. Fortunately, I have to mulligan that hand. Hopefully, they have turn one Ragavan though. If Pod is feeling fine, would I do another round with other builds? Maybe, maybe. I, I don't want to commit to anything today, because, like, just to be honest, like, my interest in this unbanned series is, like, I've, I'm currently, I'm interested in this deck, I'm interested, in, I was interested in the twin. Um, there are a lot of other ideas that sound, like, fine to do, but I, I don't want to do this series just to do it. I want to do it because it's, like, something I'm interested in and I'm having fun with, so... Uh, I will, I guess, update you guys as that happens. I guess I don't want to attack into like a possible scour. Get delirium here. Yeah, I'm enjoying the series too. But just because the series is fun and people like it doesn't mean I just need. We just need to milk it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what about burning tree emissary? Uh, with Birthing Pod? I mean, there's some synergy there, right? For sure. <laughs> Maybe not, probably not exactly where we'd end up being, though. Okay, so I'm probably going to go High Arc Cord for uh, a second copy of Young Wolf. <laughs> Unbanned Moxa Bull, Milk It, yeah. I feel like it's just like, especially with like the artifact lands being printed, it, it, like, I don't think Box Opal is like safe to unban. Yeah, yeah, that, that's something we were talking about earlier, James, is uh, is like the, the theoretical cards from Legacy being printed into Modern and doing a what if on those. And I, I am, I am like interested in that idea, but I don't, I don't know exactly, 
exactly which decks we'd want to do, you know. Bolt's the Hierarch. I guess I'm going to core to get a mana creature now. I don't know, there, there are cards like Rashad and Port that like, maybe they're not broken in the format, right? Like, maybe that's the case that Rashad and Port is not broken in Modern. But like, boy, Rashad and Port sure does uh, stink to play against. Cards like really, really unfun. <laughs> so, I, I, it's not really the kind of card I'd be that interested in playing with. I, I don't want Port in Modern. It leads to like a lot of really like non-game and feel bad moments. I guess I'll leave this back to block here. Yeah, Krakus is too good for modern, I think. And it's also like kind of boring though. It's like, what is a what does a Krakus deck look like? Palace Jailer is a card I've always wanted modern. I would like monarch cards to stay away from 60 card formats, to be honest. I think like I think letting cards like Palace Jailer and other monarch cards, letting like a mechanic intended for multiplayer games enter modern is was a mistake um and i i'm not that interested in, in monarch cards entering modern just in general if they finish the veil of summer cycle they have a finished veil of summer cycle like in that in that course set there was a cycle of hate cards for all the colors all right channeler not feeling super delirious here You will resolve. Chris, the hunger tide. You're going, let's go! <laughs> awesome. I can't believe it resolved. <laughs> Woo! Oh, wait, now they're delirious. <laughs> no! Okay, we can't complain too much. Yeah, yeah, the red one that couldn't kill Oko. It was, yeah, it was ridiculous that Fry didn't kill Oko. Yeah, like, I don't know why Oko's, it feels like so obvious to me that Oko's plus two should have been a plus one, and Oko's plus one should have been a minus one, and it still would have been a really strong card, don't get me wrong, but it, it just, it just feels like those changes seem to be very obviously way more balanced. Does the bubble statement by getting better over time not apply to pod and twin because of the higher CMC? I mean, so, like, one thing is it's, like, I don't want to get it, you know, too twisted here. Pod and Twin are more powerful cards absolutely now than they were when they were banned. I, I, don't, want, I don't want that to be mistaken. Uh, that's definitely the case, that these cards are more powerful no, now than they were when they were banned. But it's also true the modern format as a whole is more powerful as well. And so when you're talking about, like, three and four mana cards... Um, that are like somewhat mana if inefficient, then then the conversation becomes more interesting, in my opinion. Uh, that that being said, like I I don't think twin should be unbanned, um, but I'm starting to think that maybe pod is fine. But it's like it's also like way too early to to like really decide something. Like here, if my opponent top decks a good interactive spell, we lose and. <laughs> And if they don't, we win, and this game had nothing to do with Birthing Pot at all. Thanks. Let's see, it's failed a lot in design space in the last five years. I mean, yes, I would say that's definitely true. But I would also say, like, specifically the last year has been pretty good. We were talking about, like, when, like, when the dark times ended... It was I think I think it was like either Ikora or like the core set after Ikora was the last like pretty badly designed set. Yeah, I think I think Zendikar Rising was the top, was has been the start of the good times. It's like Zendikar Rising, Cal Time, and Strixhaven, Adventures in Forgotten Realms, Innistrad Midnight Hunt, and Modern Horizons 2 have all been like really well designed. Obviously none of them are perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect magic set, but um pretty good they did put two cards they put three cards in the yard, yard here i mean obviously i don't really have any choice besides cast the yawk moth i guess i probably should have attacked first 
Let's go. Don't forget Tibble's trickery. Uh, okay, yeah, so I guess Cal time. GG's. GG's indeed. Another really exciting game where Pod wasn't <laughs> really <laughs> wasn't exciting. a factor at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an interesting decision early on where I could have, like, let the Yogg resolve, and then if you kill my DRC, I can heat the Yogg, and then I get to play Murktide with Counterspell up. But if you just, like, don't kill my DRC, I don't get to do that. And, uh... Like, who knows if I just, like... Then you also, like, get to draw cards with Yogg, and who knows if I just, you know, find another counter spell or something and get to live that dream anyway. Yeah, I, I ended up flooding, flooding out a bit at the end there, despite those considers. Yeah, I feel like if you just hit Delirium... Chandler was just not Delirious for so long, and you were... I was very dead if you hit it in a reasonable time at all, I think. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a factor, too. I was so afraid of Grist, and then I had to, like, play into it anyway. Yeah, Grist is, you know, that that is definitely something to say about about this deck, is I, I feel like Grist is a more powerful card than Birthing Pod here. Not that, that, not that you should necessarily compare the cards too much to each other, and not that you should, like, you, like, you can pod into Grist, but... Yeah, like, if that, if the deck that you're playing was legal like grist is almost more of a reason to play it than pod yeah that, yeah, that's kind of what i'm getting at here like in the in, in the time it didn't seem that bad i was still like having fun playing magic but just in retrospect if those sets were more spaced out i feel like things would have been so different it would have been better for sure Thanks for, like, completely repeating your entire rant. I almost, like, jokingly said, like, I wasn't here for the rant. Can you start over from the beginning? And then you just, like, gave it anyway. <laughs> well, I had time to, to workshop it a little bit here, you know. It was better the second time. Nice. I got the good version. Let's keep this. Perfect mana. Not perfect mana anymore. Curse you, spreading seas. I mean, she has a bunch of bannable cards kept legal by other broker cards. I don't think I agree with that, uh, to be honest. But time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah, I was really looking forward to having two bayous here. Now I just, I just don't have functioning mana. Ugh, I feel so bad. Need to draw Twilight Mire. Went from all bayous to all basic swamps. Went from all bayous to all basic islands. <laughs> I can't, but why did I say when I kept this hand, I have perfect mana. My mana is perfect. I was just asking for trouble. Just asking for trouble. <laughs> The plus two Jace the Mind Sculptor chooses not to use. Oh man. Ouch. Okay, I'm gonna bring in the Rex Age, the Veil of Summers. Um, maybe the Liberator, maybe not the Liberator. I don't want the Hapatra against the control deck. Um, I could probably trim on Court of Calling, cut the Spider, cut the Third Wall. Let's ask about this. Yeah, brief summary. Pod has felt like a small upgrade. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say small. It's felt it's it's definitely felt like an upgrade of this deck, but it hasn't like felt broken or anything. It's felt fine. Obviously, a super small sample size. I'm not saying I've got an informed final opinion or anything here, but it's felt fine so far. Salta Yogmoth now. You know, my my very first versions of Yogmoth were Sultai back in the day. Where like Neoform was like uh I've always felt like Neoform has been very good in the archetype. And you also have Fiddle uh, Flibble Flip to Neoform into. Oh dude. I should have played I should have played Sultai with Flibble Flip. That card's pretty good with pod. 
All right, if Pod ever gets a ban, make sure to buy your football flips. Probably just buy one. Four messengers can't be correct. Well, a messenger is amazing with birthing pod. It's been pretty good today. That's that's the idea behind playing four messenger in the deck because it's like that card is a lot stronger with pod. But obviously, like this deck is not a perfect deck list. Uh, there's no way to have the perfect uh, Yogmoth seventy five um, or uh, with birthing pod legal with your first draft. It's definitely the kind of deck you need to you would need to play and test a lot. Uh, what's pod's record? It was two and three. The Kiki Pod went two and three. We're currently one and two and down a game. Last night I dreamed the perfect pod deck. Yeah, the dreams didn't come to me, unfortunately. Like endurance is better than the three slot. Yeah, I just have to test a lot. At the very least, like I, I feel like the, my level, my thinking here, that uh, like messenger is good with pod. It's like very intentionally, like level one thinking. Where for these like what if streams, I'm not that interested in in getting too weird with it, right? I want to uh, I don't think I'm gonna cord for two here. I'm just gonna attack. I, I wanna get kinda weird with it and I, or, sorry, I sorry, I don't want to get weird with it. I want to play like the more kind of basic, more stock looking, uh, easier to build like more obviously the way that these decks would be built. Because I, I feel like that these are the ways that the decks would be built initially, and trying to get too many levels deep and too metagamey um, is a good way to have bad testing. So I know I can't cord for four if I attack here, but like if I don't attack, it's so obvious that I have the cord. And if Caleb like and attacking here might make Caleb castle, which means I can cord for grist. Gonna let the uh, scry resolve before I cord though. Does Caleb know that Grist can kill Teferi? <laughs> Looks like it. Okay, well, I didn't necessarily think I would get to resolve a Yogmoth, but here we are. All right, so if we could draw a green source here, we've got three more looks, which every every land is a green source besides Blooming Marsh because we have the Yavamaya. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now we have our Yogmoth combo, let's go. <laughs> the top of our library, pretty kind to us here, huh? No! Sorry, I did it again, my bad. Oops, right. I did it again. <laughs> Sorry, chat. Magic's hard. Not usually awake at this hour. Really? Uh, yeah, actually, I usually like to stream, and then I eat a big lunch, and then I nap, and then I do my like late night like uh, writing articles and stuff, and just hanging out with my partner, and then I usually like sleep sleep for like six hours gotcha yeah we have the the opposite problem like when we started the stream i'm usually not awake at that time <laughs> <laughs> so we, we uh we switched we inverted yeah meeting in the middle let's just use voice research and stop a lot of interaction against the pod decks i mean stop is not entirely true because it uh you can still you can still counter the pod and uh you get a token which is not the end of the world. Uh, voice is also like kind of weak against um, 
Uh, prismatic ending too. <sighs> Bummer. Yeah, you guys can maybe uh, try to figure out in your heads how this game would look if I had um, the extra like 1,000 cards in hand here. Sorry for throwing. Yeah, my hand just doesn't do anything. Yeah, maybe that game's a little different if I draw like 10 more cards. But my hand was pretty bad there, just like Young Wolf, Blood Artist, Veil of Summer, and like four lands. They actually suck the creatures that put the counter out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, it's definitely different. I mean, I had a counter spell, but that was about it. So I was a little reliant on Teferi to continue feeding me gas. Yeah, maybe a bit of a preemptive concession, but I don't know. I feel like the whole testing is a little. This feels a little off after the, the misclick there. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's mulligan this hands. Keep this. I, I would love to have the blood artist in the hand, but I think this is just like you have to keep the. You have to keep the messenger, the Yogmoth, and the three lands. They have dead gone. It's pretty good. Always feels like cheating when they get to do that. Uh, Scurio combos with Foundry Street, Street Denizen. Is that the name of the card? Ivy Lane Denizen, thank you. Found I don't Foundry Street Denizen is another card. I don't I don't know what it is though. Alright, so Caleb can't cast Charlotte, we can cast Violent Outburst. I'm not gonna attack into the Violent Outburst. Taking eight, taking 10, but then we get to pod, we get a, we get a one mana Yawgmoth to start our turn off. Um, and we've got a little bit of life to work with. We do need to draw. We do need to draw something. Yeah, the problem is here, I, I just didn't draw a cheap creature to like reset the messenger here. So I have to I have to sack the messenger should like even have the possibility of getting anything going. It's just not enough. Just not enough. Yeah, the life total from Pod there was like very relevant that game for sure. Cord for Dried Arbor. I couldn't cord. I couldn't. Yogmoth doesn't tap for green, so I couldn't cord for Dried Arbor there. Right. Boston, thirteen months. Thank you. But I was cord before Pod. Cord before Pod. Oh, cord, cord the, the previous turn? Oh, I can't, no, I, no, cord, you can't cord for Dryad Arbor, then tap Dryad Arbor. Wait, did, did I, ha did I have the cord available um, on, on the, on the previous turn? Because if then I should, I should have done it. Shallow, thank you for the 10 months, appreciate you. Um, but I don't think I had the mana available for that, right? Because if I had the mana available, I cast the pod the turn before. Yeah, and I can't, I can't on that turn court for Arbor. I can't, you can't tap Arbor the turn. I, I think I'm not sideboarding in this matchup. Uh, maybe I should play some Veil of Summers. Hold on. Uh, but you can't, you can't court for Arbor then tap it immediately. That doesn't work. The turn you played Pod, I could have courted for one. I know that. I think that line is like right in hindsight, but my line is like so much more likely to win if I end up drawing a fetch land for Arbor, or if I draw a Young Wolf, or if I draw a one mana creature, because then I'm able to reset my messenger, draw more cards, try to get the Undying combo going, and then maybe getting Blood Artist going. Right? I think cord courting courting for Arbor, untapping, spinning eight life on Pod, 
um, and then I'm completely tapped out just to get Yogmoth in play. That is not a winning line. Yeah, that line doesn't do anything. I guess I'm going to keep this. It's, like, not good. But it definitely has a plan, and we're on the play. Okay, that was a phenomenal draw. Is Recruiter just better than Pod? I would say Pod is better than Recruiter. I don't know. Sample size is really small, but I would say Pod is definitely better than Recruiter. But you could play both together, of course. All right, drawing a second pod, I'm gonna play one here. If it gets forced, we have the second copy. Yeah, Recruiter also like causes you to play a different color, of course. Pitching the fire ice. So I'm pretty sure we just spend four mana on another pod. And then not attacking into Violent Outburst. And then we take eight. Probably down to nine. We play Messenger. Oh my gosh, okay. Well, that was a gift. That was a gift. How does Caleb have nothing here? Oh yeah, I don't know how Caleb just has nothing. I'm very confused. Yeah, this wins the game if Caleb has nothing, and it's like pretty hard to disrupt outside of like Prismari Command or Petty Theft. Can't force a negation. Um, okay, Stomp the Messenger. So I guess I'm just going to spend this turn getting another Messenger, attacking for three. Playing the bird. Seems pretty good. Caleb's roll is also like not super strong. He did have the force for the first pod. But it's like no rhinos on turn three. It was like I feel like the deciding factor there. All right, just gonna run it back. Yeah, Caleb, I don't think can draw as well with Rhinos as I can. I have, I have two Veil of the deck. I don't think I want three, because it only stops Veil of Summer. I guess Ice, too. Petty Theft. Yeah, I should play three. Yeah, the pot decks have not done great so far. Caleb went two and three. I'm currently one and three, uh, and going to game three against Rhinos. Definitely a lot of close matches though, but it's not like Pod has felt like overwhelmingly strong compared to the Twin stream where Twin did feel really, really strong in the blue-red version. Well, easy keep. Yeah, we're, we're playing an almost Spider because I think different mana values to tutor four off of Pod are good. Uh, Spider is also like pretty good against like the Ragavan Channeler decks. Do you think the play patterns are interesting? Yeah, I do actually. I do think the play patterns uh, are very interesting with this deck. I think I replay the bird here. This gives me the ability to go Yogmoth next turn or Hapatra plus Stringer Geist. We started like four hours ago, coach, but you can catch the whole VOD on YouTube. Not sure exactly when, but it should be pretty soon. Okay, so I think I want to Yogmoth this turn because it's just more resilient to the burn spells that Caleb can have. And then next turn I can go uh, Hapatra and mow down some creatures. I also get to block the Charlotte's Agent. Charlotte's Agent is a human, so the two damage won't kill the Yogmoth. I'm cold to a second Brazen Borrower, um, but I think, if, I think if I can avoid that, I'm going to do okay. Hopefully. Did I place Eldritch with Pod? I mean, some other changes. Like, I'm playing four Messengers because it's pretty good with Pod, right? But that's that, this is, again, like, I wanted to play, like, a pretty, like, what, what I would interpret as 
kind of the obvious uh, deck to build with Pod. Yeah, we were uh, cold to that. Definitely Walters should have done that pre-combat for two more damage. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I wasn't... Uh, I had a few different lines and I like wasn't quite sure what I was going to be doing, but Thoughts of the Og just seemed so good. Yeah, I don't think I can beat a hand with multiple different lines with this hand. But here, here, here goes. Yeah, I just need to reset this turn. And next turn, if I if I can go Hapatra, Court for Blood Artist, um, I can kill all of my opponent's creatures, draw a, a thousand cards. I do think I have to jump with the Wall of Roots um, to not die to a one burn spell. Oh, we might actually get there. We might actually get there. We lose to Dead Gone or Land Plus Interaction. All right, I think we win. Yeah, I love Apatra. All right, that's game, right? Does Caleb realize? Well, GGs. GGs? GGs? I guess in hindsight, I should have played Blood Moon there. Um, yeah, that that would have got the job done. Yeah, that 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 definitely would have won. Felt really good to you know dump more rhinos into play, and that's how like the first game happened, but. Yeah, I get my life total down is definitely really relevant too. It's kind of like I have to have either Blood Artist or Hapatra in hand plus Cord for this for you to get really punished here. I think. Yeah, but then Blood Moon just like stops that. Yeah, and, ex exactly, exactly. And if I stop you from doing that, then I can just like make the Rhinos the next turn, and the ones that I have are still doing damage. Yeah, yeah I think, the, well, I think the Blood Moon plan would have been better. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Especially, Especially after I jumped with the wall. Sure. Yeah. And especially with the benefit of hindsight here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for staying late and uh, doing this uh, doing this series with me. Yeah, of course. Uh, two, three with both pod decks. I the the pod decks definitely did worse than I expected them to do. Um, yeah, I, and I, they I, felt yeah. like so. Like after after testing twin, I was like not confident that it would be fine, and I feel like kind of confident that pod would be fine. Yeah, that's yeah. I had like the complete opposite experience with uh, Pod and Twin, where I went into Twin expecting it to be kind of fine, left thinking it probably wouldn't be, and went into Pod thinking it probably would not be fine, and left thinking that yeah, I, th I think it probably would be a relatively safe unban. A lot of the Pod games were fun too. Yeah, I will say that too. Like the play patterns, like did feel really interesting. I had fun in like every single game, which is definitely the kind of card you want to unban. If you're going to have more fun, the games are going to be more interesting. One of my viewers kind of compared Pod to Stoneforge Mystic, where like if it gets unbanned, like it probably sees play, but it certainly doesn't like dominate the format or anything like that. Yeah, and it's, it's also definitely true. Like there's a ton of different ways to to build a birthing pod deck. And sure. if it were legal, then it would probably always be around and there would be a million different versions, so it's mm -hmm. not like this is any kind of like a conclusive thing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. it's hard to get, like re reach hard conclusions just by playing a few leagues, but uh, but we got like a, a slightly better idea of it. It was mm -hmm. interesting that the matchups uh, with the two different pod decks felt pretty different too. Like the um, like one of the wins for the for my version of the pod, the Kiki Pod deck was the Elementals deck because the because of the combo availability, like winning that game three off of the combo. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's really interesting. Like, it just, like, 
I would be, I think, excited if a birthing pod unban happens because of all of the possibilities for deck building it would open up. It's just it, it'd be interesting to see like what actually happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I I would I I probably would want to like digest it and sleep on it for a few days before I really, you know, gave like a strong opinion one way or another. But this was definitely fun. This was definitely fun. Yeah, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Okay, well, I guess I'll let you get on with your stream, Caleb. Yeah.